Welcome to the show. We have a great show today. I really think you're going to like it. If you've watched very many of my videos, you know that I often bring up the angle grinder. It's one tool that I, I really feel like a knife maker almost can't live without, especially a beginning knife maker, as I still very much am. So today we're going to demonstrate the versatility and really the capabilities of the angle grinder. We'll be starting out with a piece of scrap structural steel. This is probably low carbon steel and cannot be properly hardened, at least not without special processes. But when it comes to working the steel, its properties are going to be very similar to some other steels that are regularly used for knife making. So it seems suitable for demonstration purposes, especially because this is the type of steel that you go to a scrap yard or a welding shop, they might charge you, you know, five or ten bucks for an arm load, and it's perfect for practice. To begin with, I like the size and the thickness of this piece of scrap, but of course I'll be cutting these sides off so that I have a nice rectangular section to work with. One of the things that makes an angle grinder such a versatile tool is that there are a lot of different discs that you can put on here. For this project, I'll be using a cutting disc that you might pick up for two or three bucks at a hardware store. And we'll also be using a grinding disc, probably similar price. Sometimes you'll pay a little more or a little less depending on the brand and depending on the materials and the quality of the disc you buy. Now it's very important to keep in mind that this tool is working at a very, very high RPM and so it has a lot of inertia. Normally, of course, that's a good thing, but as you're doing a cut like the type that I'm doing here, there will be a point where that wheel actually penetrates through the metal. And when that happens, it will definitely catch, and sometimes it'll bind really badly in there. So this is a method that maybe takes a little bit of practice to really get comfortable with. You definitely don't want to be wearing loose clothing or anything that could get caught in the wheel if it suddenly jumps on you. And always be sure to have a good, firm, two-handed grip on the grinder. I haven't mentioned it yet, but of course I'm also wearing eye protection, ear protection, and a breathing mask. A good quality respirator style mask does not cost a lot of money. You can find them at home improvement stores, hardware stores, you'll find them online. It is definitely an investment worth making. Once those cuts are made, I have this nice rectangular centerpiece, and I also have these edges that I can use for another project at another time. So I'm cleaning up the edges a little bit. You always have these little metal splinters and burrs that kind of hang off, and I find it's best to clean those things up right away so you don't wind up getting a big splinter later. The other thing I'm going to do here, real quickly, I've used this scrap for some other things and it's gotten bent up and dinged up a little bit. Usually a piece of scrap metal will actually be pretty flat and you can just use it as is. But in this case I'm going to take a hammer and tweak it a little bit because I had bent it up before. Any hard flat surface will work for this. I could use a shop floor if I wanted to. I happen to have an anvil so I might as well use it. Now even though I'm going to be doing this out of a piece of scrap metal, that doesn't mean I can't put a little bit of style into it. So you'll see me sketching out a shape here that I like. Of course, if you're doing a project like this, you could really do any kind of knife you wanted to. Because of the dimensions of the piece I'm working with, I really see this thing as a cleaver, so that's the direction I'm going. Now there really isn't a whole lot to say about this next part of the process. It's very similar to when you're making the long straight cuts. You want to go a little bit slowly with it. Don't apply too much pressure because if it binds, the grinder can really jump. And I will admit, I've nicked myself a few times with one of these, and it's not fun. Depending on the shape of the knife that you're going for, you may find yourself having to cut into some smaller contours, more confined spaces. One of the drawbacks of the grinder is that you really can't get into a tight space and make a turn. You can improve your maneuverability a little bit by breaking up the task into smaller pieces and then cutting those out and kind of getting those out of the way. Again, when you're making cuts like this, you always want to be aware that if the cutting disc catches suddenly, because it's moving at very high speed, there's a lot of energy in there and that grinder is going to really jump on you. So make sure you have a good firm grip. And again, always wear protective gear when you're doing this and avoid loose clothing or anything that could easily catch in the grinder. Of course, this is going to leave you with some really rough and ugly cuts, but don't worry about that. In a minute here, we're going to switch wheels and the grinding wheel will just power right through those rough areas. Once you have things roughed out, you can switch to a good grinding disc. These will last a long, long time. In fact, this one I've used on many projects. And when it comes to shaping things and when you're looking for a certain amount of precision, it's nice to use a disc that's not quite so aggressive. So a good worn out grinding disc can actually be very useful for putting the finishing touches on a design.
Once I'm satisfied with the overall shape, I'm going to put the edge in here. Now, under ordinary circumstances, this would be the point where we would put in a bevel, heat treat the knife, and then we'd come back after the heat treat and put in the final edge. But since I'm working with a scrap of mystery steel here, and I suspect that it's probably not hardenable, I'll be skipping that step and just going straight to putting in the edge. But I do have a lot of other videos on knife making, and in many of those I go through the process of heat treating. So if you're interested in learning about that, by all means, check out the rest of the videos on my channel. But since we won't be heat treating with this project, I'm actually going to take the bevel on both sides straight down to the edge. You'll also notice that I'm doing this at a much more aggressive angle than you would see on a typical knife. Of course, if you're doing this project, you can do it however you want. I'm doing this because I want to demonstrate that even if you're working with steel and you're not going to be hardening it, you can put a functional edge on the steel that will stand up to quite a bit of rugged use. Of course, with a, with a bevel at this angle, this is definitely not going to be a very good slicing tool, but I'll be using this knife to chop and split wood, and for that purpose, I really don't need a fine, thin edge on the knife. Now, putting in a bevel with a grinder is definitely a tricky process. You want to maintain one consistent angle. And of course, when you're working freehand, you're not using any guides, that can be really difficult to do. And under ordinary circumstances, a knife maker would have specialized equipment for this, like a bench grinder or maybe more typically a, a belt grinder. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to show that it can all be done with the angle grinder. This process is going to take some patience. But as long as you don't get frustrated and do something dumb, you can actually get a pretty decent bevel with a grinder. Now at this point, we already have a functional edge. Of course, it's not razor sharp. You're not going to slice through paper with this thing. But you could definitely split and chop wood with it. You will see me using a couple of hand tools here just to clean up that edge a little bit and give it a little bit more precision so we have something to really look at when we do that kind of before and after. At this point, all there really is left to do is to put some kind of wrap on the handle so I don't hurt myself when I'm testing the knife. Of course, there are many options when you're doing a wrap on a knife handle. I could use paracord, leather, twine, or if this was a more involved project, I might consider using micarta or hardwood scales or something like that. But in this case, I think I'm much more concerned really about the functionality than I am about the looks. So I'll be using regular old hockey tape. This is the kind of tape that hockey players use to wrap their sticks. I've found that it's a very durable option. It provides a good grip. Uh, it's not very weatherproof, but you know, as long as you're not leaving it out in the rain all day, it will actually last for a very long time. And of course, if it wears out, it's real easy and really inexpensive to replace. When I'm doing a wrap like this, I like to give myself a little bit of a palm swell. So I'll put a few layers of tape right in the part of the handle that's going to kind of fit into the heel of my palm. And just to make sure that I'm giving myself adequate cushion on the handle, I will wrap the rest of it in maybe two or three or four layers of tape. It's obviously kind of a subjective process. And in this case, I came right to the end of the roll of tape, just about right where I wanted to stop. I probably would have been happier if I had a couple inches of tape left on the roll. But for my purposes today, this is good enough. With the handle finished, it's time to see if a knife made from some kind of structural mystery steel will actually hold an edge. Not surprisingly, the knife seemed to really excel at the splitting. Uh, I think the cross grain chopping gave me a little bit more trouble because of the geometry of the edge. I will say though that I'm pretty impressed that there's absolutely no damage to the edge of the blade. It seems just as sharp as it was when I started. Of course, this was only, you know, four or five minutes of testing. If you put this thing through hours of chopping or something like that, I would expect that edge to get blunt much more rapidly than it would if this was uh, properly hardened steel. But we've definitely demonstrated that with nothing but an angle grinder and a scrap of structural steel, 
you can make a functional tool that will actually hold an edge longer than you might think. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I would love to have you as a subscriber to the channel if you aren't subscribed already. I usually upload about two or three times a week, so there's always something new to check out. And with that, I will say whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.